you very much. I thought we were going to get a Mexican wave there at some point uh, when we were doing the sound check. Uh, so uh, thank you for the introduction. Um, so look, four o'clock slot on the first day of Madfest. Um, I think that, yeah, hopefully there's going to be some alcohol flowing at some point after this. Um, but for the next 15 minutes, uh, we are going to talk about the wonderful world of programmatic out of home. Um, and I am joined by two very special guests who have really been early adopters in this space. Um, and so I think that we've got some really nice case studies to be able to talk to you about. Um, and I hope that you're all going to walk away with some really nice learnings uh, to take forward. So I just want to very briefly start by saying that this year, 2022, we have had an absolutely phenomenal start uh, to programmatic out of home. And I think there's been a little bit of a blend of digital burnout. Um, there's a lot of talk at the moment uh, about privacy concerns. I think that tomorrow there's going to be a lot of talk about attention. Um, and, you know, we, we're actually seeing uh, some people reporting uh, that there is going to be growth um, of, of up to sort of 56% in this space um, over the next few years. And one very lively forecast from eMarketer uh, suggested that programmatic out of home might constitute 17% of digital out of home spend this year. Um, so it is, it is hugely growing. It is three times more quickly growing than uh, social channels. And uh, so we are in a very, very kind of interesting space. A few people have actually said that, you know, it's one of the big buzzwords of 2022. And I suppose our job, hopefully, is to tell you that it's not just going to be a passing fad, uh, that there is some really amazing emerging technology in this space coming down, uh, coming down the track. So I should introduce my guests. Um, I am delighted to welcome uh, Louisa Lee, um, who I'm just going to read my notes here, is the head of marketing, trade planning and media from Marks and Spencers. Um, and Ben Chad, who is the managing partner on the account at Mindshare. Um, so yeah, together we're just going to share a couple of case studies about um, learnings uh, from, I suppose, the programmatic journey, really. Um, as I say, you, you, you were one of the early adopters in this space, and, and um, I think that we've got some really interesting stuff uh, to, to talk about. So let's get going. Um, I think the first question, maybe just for a little bit of context, it would be nice to hear from Louisa um, about, I suppose, how Marks and Spencers have traditionally used out of home and how that media challenge has evolved over the last kind of two to three years. Yeah, it's a, a good question, Kate. So for us, out of home has been a part of our media plans forever um, and a substantial part as well. We do a lot of 360 marketing campaigns and out of home has definitely had its role in there because um, it gives us reach and scale but it also gives us impact. So we are a clothing retailer, we sell clothes. Um, so for us, it is a brilliant uh, channel for showing color, style, vibrancy, movement. So it's always had a role in our, in our channel mix and quite a big one. I think probably the journey that we've gone on is a really interesting one actually through COVID when we pulled back from a lot of our more broadcast channels, particularly out of home because people weren't out of the home. Um, so we pulled back. So I think for us coming back to the market, the challenge was about how do we do that? How do we come back to some of those channels that have traditionally played a really big part in our strategy? But how do we do that in a way that is really efficient because we've got a measure everything that we do and also in a way that is targeted and relevant actually because more than ever our customers wanted things that were relevant to them in the context and environment that they were in. So um, a really interesting journey, a very much one that we're at the beginning of I think. Is that helpful context? Totally and I think that you know you've hit the nail on the head you know I don't want I don't think that any of the speakers are necessarily wanting to revisit Covid but you know it, it hit our industry it had a real impact in out of home and, and obviously for, for retail as well. Um, so, Ben, I suppose I'm curious to know, at what point did you start thinking that programmatic might be able to answer some of the marketing challenges that, that Louise has just spoken about? Yeah, I think for us and for m and in general, it was that moment when we came out of COVID about how do we show up again um, in broadcast channels, but at the right time and in the right place. Um, I think we always say, like, m and is a nation sweetheart. Um, it's kind of like the fabric of life, so how do we ensure that we can be there through every step of the consumer's journey? Uh, and Programmatic Outdoor was definitely the channel that did that. So back in uh, spring-summer 2021, it was almost our first foray back into, into broadcast, but in a safe, tactical, 
practical way that we could switch on and off with the relevant data feeds. And I think from then on, the journey with programmatic outdoor has kind of continued into kind of autumn, winter, into our kind of big tactical campaigns. And I think we use outdoor big and small um, from big takeovers, special builds, impact builds, and kind of programmatic outdoor has really become the bread and butter of all of our campaigns. And then we use some of those other tactics within outdoor to kind of spike at the relevant moments. I love that. And I think that, you know, we are, we've just entered our fifth year of, of programmatic trading um, at JC Deco. And I think that you are one of the clients that we are starting to see repeat business from. Um, and so I love the idea that you sort of took that test and learn approach. Um, so I suppose, could you just talk to us a little bit about um, maybe some of the other channels that you used in combination with the programmatic out of home and, and maybe sort of what some of the highlights and, and also maybe some of the challenges of, of the campaign were? Yeah, of course. So we, programmatic video obviously was the also backbone social, as you can imagine. What we have begun to do a lot more is use um, mobile geo digital as well in combination with our programmatic outdoor to drive footfall into store. And actually, from a measurement perspective, we've seen a real uplift um, in terms of actually driving people into store, into kind of the um, into the shop front, and getting them to shop across the range. Um, we've traditionally been a big kind of broadcast TV spender, um, and always will be. Um, but our approach to outdoor has complemented that, alongside kind of our more kind of tactical, kind of bread and butter, social and programmatic video uh, strategy. And, and I guess, um, Louisa, perhaps, perhaps to you, when you know you first started talking to Ben um, and, and sort of thinking about programmatic, and that first started being, I suppose, articulated in, in some of your meetings, what were your kind of immediate thoughts? Were you sort of like, yes, definitely keen to give this a go, or were you a bit nervous, perhaps, about how you were going to sort of? Um, did you have to sell it into the rest of the business, for example? Yeah, I think that's probably a, a question that has two separate answers. So I personally was really excited because I'd seen some case studies from other markets, actually. Um, um, so I was kind of like, oh, right, brilliant, let's go. This could be really fun. And actually, the timing was everything because it was about us returning to the market and also, you know, actually driving customers into our shops, physical shops. We had a very clear brief. So I was really excited. I think internally, actually within our marketing function, it's an easy sell, right? Because we're saying, let's try this. We're not talking about trying a multi-million pound 360 TV campaign. We're saying, let's try some of this and see how we go. The challenge came more with the rest of our organization that doesn't necessarily understand marketing and doesn't definitely doesn't understand programmatic outdoor. So, you know, they were in a mindset of, right, well, I don't know how much of this product I've got because the ship from China hasn't arrived yet. So if you put this in your advertising, are we going to have to pull it? So actually, it was brilliant to be able to say to them, we can be really agile with this channel. We can change creative. We can um, flip things in and out and move from one business unit to another, actually in a really agile way. So from that perspective, it was, it was a great sell. It took a little bit of reassurance on that side. But I think the proof then is that started as a four-week campaign. So that was kind of like, as we reopen, let's see how we go, let's see how we trade, does it work? How are customers behaving as well, right? Because a big part of it for us was making sure we judge the mood of the nation. We're a big brand and we have to be a bit responsible in this space. And if we get it wrong, it's pretty disastrous. So actually being able to go, if we get it wrong, it's okay, we can pull back, we can change, was brilliant. So it started off as a four-week campaign, and actually we just kept adding on. We added another eight weeks um, on, on that specific campaign. So that, as a whole, ran for 12 weeks, which is fantastic. And then to Ben's earlier point, that laid the groundwork for the role of programmatic outdoor in, in our subsequent campaigns amongst other channels. So, yeah. And Ben, from your experience, sort of, you know, on, the, on that, um, in, in the agency, is there anything sort of thing that really resonates there, or are there any other kind of challenges that we haven't spoken about yet? Yeah, I think there is some type, the challenge sometimes with programmatic outdoor is people almost try to do too much in their first campaign. It's let's make it dynamic, let's have 20 data feeds that feed into what we do. And almost it feels like it's really hard and really complicated. I think getting brands to test it, test it with a few, we're really lucky with MS that we you can use their first party data and a lot of what we do, their customer data but test it with a few things, and then the possibilities are endless from there. But I think almost 
some brands' reticence is about trying to do too, too much with it in one go. And we definitely saw that, you know, as audiences started to return, which, by the way, they, they absolutely have. Um, as we started to see, you know, audiences return, there was that idea of flexibility that I think really became a game changer for brands wanting to kind of, you know, as you say, gently kind of come back into the channel. Um, so I'm just going to do a little time check. How are we getting on? Have we got, yeah, we're all good. I'm just going to kind of keep on talking then. Um, so, uh, so we've spoken a bit about uh, the flexibility, haven't we, and the switching it on and off. We've spoken a little bit about the footfall and, and the measurement and the attribution and the fact that you extended the campaign. Um, and, and treated it as a test and learn and, and, and the idea of keeping it simple I, I think is, is super important. Um, I suppose if we started to maybe look a little bit into the future and thinking about some of those learnings that you've spoken about, presumably the way that you're applying programmatic across your other channels and in your other plans, there's loads of really amazing data and it is probably more sophisticated. So. Have you got any kind of campaigns that are running now or recently that you're sort of thinking, wow, I wonder if we could transpose some of that kind of planning and that application to out of home? Um, you know, where, what, what's sort of the next exciting kind of thing for you to do in, in this space? Yeah, I think there's a couple of things for me and, and Ben, if you've got other great ideas that you haven't told us about yet, like now's chance. Um, I think for us, there's a, there's a bit about how do we show the customer what they are interested in and convert that into a sale as quickly as we can, right? So if I take um, one, of our, one of our campaigns, actually, it's a pretty recent one, but I think there's, it's got loads of legs in it. We did a good move activation back in January this year. Um, and what we wanted to do was be able to show a customer, sounds, sounds like really simple, be able to show a customer a picture of a product that we actually had in their local store, yeah? And that's really hard. So because of all the data feeds, as Ben says, it's almost like pick one thing and try and do that. And in that activation, we were trying to do too much. We were also trying to do some weather stuff as well, I think. And it just, I would like to go again on that and just do it, do it better. So there's definitely more we can do there. I think the other one which we have not scratched the surface on, we, we've talked about it but we haven't put it out there yet, is how we are, I guess, representative of Britain in what we do creatively um, and how we flex that across the country. There's so much we can do in that space and actually, you know, we have 22 and a half million customers, that's half of all the adults in the UK. We have a responsibility to show up in a way that resonates with almost every one of those people. So I think that's a space that we haven't even scratched the surface on and I'd definitely love to do more of. Yeah, I think in that, I think it's showing people, people like them in what we're doing from an outdoor perspective. And to Louise's point, M&S is a brand of the people, we represent everyone. And I think we need to ensure that we are showing up creatively with our messaging that is um, applicable for everyone. And I think the creative piece as well, working hand in hand with Odd, the creative agency who are, who are incredible, about how can we adapt and ensure that we have all the different shoots, all the different products, and the, so we can show the right products to the right people at the right time. And I think getting, we've got the media part down in terms of the data feeds and in terms of um, the use of first party data. And I think we can get even better with creative and like I said, be representative of Britain, which is the m and brand. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. I think that um, diversity, inclusion, equality is it, going to be really important, isn't it? And that's the beauty of Out of Home. We're ubiquitous, but you can really use context and location to sort of, I think, bring those stories to life. Um, so very excited to see what else we've got coming. Have I got time for one more question? Yeah? Um, I think we've sort of covered this a little bit, um, but um, we obviously don't know who is sat in our audience, but if you had, I suppose, one bit of advice or one thing to sort of watch out for, for, for people that are thinking, I would love to try programmatic out of home, but it all feels a bit scary, it feels a bit daunting, what advice would you give to people sat there thinking that they might want to kind of dip their toe? So I'll give the flippant client answer and Ben can give the sensible one. <laughs> um, I'd say go for it, like just try, like start, you don't need to go all out and all guns blazing initially, like start small, try it because you'll pretty quickly work out that it's a really effective channel and has, a, has an absolute role in, in your media mix. Yeah, and I think I said it earlier, it's don't try and do too much too soon. Pick a couple of points, what aligns up to your strategy? So for us, it was either shifting style perceptions or driving frequency of product. And actually, what are the data feeds or what, how can you use programmatic outdoor 
to deliver on that single objective. So be single-minded about it and don't try and do everything within your first campaign and you'll see how the channel evolves and that's kind of how we've worked with the channel. And we're excited to do loads more with it. Yeah, do you know what? Like, we're, as I say, we're right at the beginning of this, um, you know, fight, you know, just journey in, in programmatic, and, and I feel very strongly that we cannot overcomplicate it. Like, let's think about all the good things that Out of Home does, and just use that kind of precision, that targeting, to kind of push it on to more sophisticated levels. Um, so I have like a very short little bit that I'll kind of wrap up with and say thank you. But is there a question that we want to put out to the audience, or shall I just finish the segment? I don't think that people can hear you, but maybe I will just say my thank yous and probably the time is up. Um, so look, thank you very much to Madfest. Thank you very much to Louisa and Ben and, and obviously for all of you coming. Um, what I would say is that JC Deco, we've got a little area um, downstairs uh, near the aptly named Wine Alley. So literally opposite the wine bar handily. Um, we're working on several initiatives in the business uh, that are going to hope, uh, hopefully sort of help to upskill people. Uh, and that is something that is relevant for you know, digital marketers as well as new entrants to the industry. Um, so if you've got any uh, kind of, I suppose, learning aspirations, then do come and speak to us. And we have also just launched, um, you know, to your point about measurement, some really interesting measurement and effectiveness kind of products uh, within the business. And we're making that uh, available to attendees of Madfest. So uh, please come and find us and, and the rest of the JCTCO team to have a little bit of a chat afterwards uh, with uh, something cool and crisp and uh, preferably wine-based. Uh, so thank you very, very much.